Hi everyone and happy Wednesday! I'm starting off my process this week by using a clean, well, <laughs> as you can see, not overly clean mop brush <laughs> to wet my paper ahead of time. I'm not too worried about this. I, I don't tend to over clean my brushes because I don't want a lot of my paint particles to go in, in my water dish or my water jar, I should say. Um, and so I'm just wetting the paper and now I'm going to come in and add some blue to the background. I've added some pictures at the top corner of my screen because I want to show you where the inspiration for this week's project comes from. And um, I do this a lot. I go out walking in nature and um, just, I guess, admire Mother Nature's work. And then I take pictures because a lot of these pictures end up inspiring me for some of my creative projects. I really loved how the ice was forming around the tree trunks and the blades of grass that were growing um, up and I wanted to sort of try to replicate what was happening in the ice. So near the tree trunks and the grass the ice was forming these interesting um, rings around the trunk and then in the other areas there were all these different ice crystal looking shapes and I, I wanted to see if I could somehow replicate that in a painting. My paper is very wet and saturated with the wash of color that I put over it right now so it's the perfect time to add some coarse grain salt and the coarse grain salt when it's added to the paper when it's this wet will leave some really interesting marks that I think will somewhat replicate the idea of bubbles in the freezing water. Now I guess before I go any further I should say that when I um, say that I want to replicate something that I've seen in nature, for the most part I'm not trying to recreate something realistic. I prefer to work in a more abstract way and this painting will be exactly that, an ab abstract representation of what it was that I saw uh, on my nature walk that day. Once the paper was dry I removed the coarse grain salt from um, the surface and I must say I am super happy with the marks that were left behind. Now some of this will probably still be showing by the end of my process and a lot of it may not and that is completely fine. Now at some point I might work on creating a painting where I'm more focused on uh, these shapes that were left in the paper but I have this idea of trying to, like I said before, replicate what it was that I saw in nature that day and I want to focus on these wavy lines that uh, were around the tree trunks and also the neat lines that were maybe a little bit harder to see on video um, but the, the lines that were in the ice that was next to those wavy lines was also really interesting so that's what I'm going for and it's going to be abstract it's not going to look exactly the same and that's going to be the beauty of it it's going to just be <laughs> what I imagine it to be and uh, I'm super excited about this. In this area of the painting where I just added some more paint and water, I'm going to use some saran wrap that um, came with packaging uh, for a delivery I recently got. Didn't want to throw it out because I knew I could use it and this is the perfect application for it. So as you can see I'm putting the saran wrap over the uh, wet surface and it's creating these really interesting marks. Now the most important part after I apply this is to let it sit and dry completely before removing it and those marks, those really interesting cool marks that will, um, will dry on the paper that way. But I need to be really patient and not move too quickly to remove the, the saran wrap. I left the wrap on my paper for a few hours and when I came back it was mostly dry but you can see that it still is a little bit wet on the surface. So I do wish I had waited a little bit longer but still I'm really happy with the effects that were created because this is going to go perfectly with the vision I have in mind. I work in a very intuitive way and this often means that I 
choose to relinquish control of what will happen in my painting process. So when I'm using Saran Wrap on the top of, uh, on the surface of my paint and uh, I let it sort of do its thing, that's very much me relinquishing control. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I don't know what marks are going to be left behind. But I do trust that these marks that are left behind will be exactly what I need for me to create this painting in the way I want to create it. And so I let the saran wrap do its thing and I removed it slightly early <laughs> because I was a little bit excited and I was really looking forward to continuing the process. But the, those marks that were left behind in the paint from the saran wrap are really what's helping me continue this process. So it's a lot about um, relinquishing control and really it's mostly about trusting. Trusting that with every step of the way what I'm doing right now will lead to the next best step for my painting process and so on and so on. So right now I'm going in with my micro mini brush and I'm adding some paint um, in the lines that I'm choosing to use. What I'm seeing as lines that were in between the bigger shapes that were left behind from the saran wrap. Uh, I'm calling it saran wrap, but I guess it's really plastic wrap. <laughs> saran wrap's probably a brand. And I really don't mean to <laughs> be trying to promote a brand of plastic wrap in particular. In fact, this came from packaging, so I don't even know um, <laughs> what this uh, the, the company who made this plastic wrap's name is. But um, I think any old plastic wrap would probably work fine and in fact after I used mine I just wiped it dry and I'm keeping it so that I can use it for other future projects so again the idea is that the lines that are in between the bigger shapes that were left by the plastic wrap are really um, the lines that I'm listening to my intuition and choosing to paint and that's going to mean that I'm leaving behind these interesting looking shapes that I didn't draw in myself. The paint and the plastic wrap did that for me and in that way made my life way easier. And now I'm just going in and I'm coloring in between those lines. Um, so I'm really in trust mode here. I have no idea how this is all going to turn out in the end, but I, I have this image in my mind of what it could be and I'm really excited about that. When I'm unsure about my next steps or if I'm unsure about the step I'm about to take, I usually like to go in with lighter washes of color because they're less committing. Now once I've added the lighter wash and I feel really good about that lighter wash, it's often the case that I'll come back in with a little bit more pigment and I'll darken those lines. And in this case, that's exactly what happened. I gave it a first go, really liked what I saw, but felt like I needed to darken the lines because I want there to be enough contrast that my shapes that are in the painting are going to start showing up more. And they can't do that really if I don't darken the lines. Contrast is as I've mentioned on many occasions in, in previous videos, contrast is very important because it is that thing that really sets um, the tone for the painting in some ways. It, it helps the different images and shapes that are in the painting stand out. And so that's why I'm coming in right now with this color. And I probably will come in a little bit later with something darker, but I, I want this color to show in the painting and even if I come in with something darker later on, I probably won't cover all of this.
the more I continue to work on this painting, the more, the more excited I'm getting about it. And, and that's because it's really starting to come to life. It's that, that those images that I have in my head of, about what it could become, they're starting to take shape and they're coming to life right before my eyes. And that's really, really gratifying. And uh, <laughs> it's so much fun. I cannot, I can't, <laughs> I can almost not contain myself. So <laughs> I really am loving what I'm seeing in front of me. I love that top part of the painting with all those different little um, shapes that are together. They really do look to me like ice. Does it look like what I saw in Mother Nature that day exactly? Absolutely not. And that's the beauty of abstract art. You don't have to create it exactly the way you saw it in, in nature. You can create it according to how you see it in your mind. Ah, oh, and that to me is even more beautiful. Well, no offense, Mother Nature. Your work is really, really awesome. But I also love that I can give it my own spin and fall in love with that too. For this painting, because I want it to be represented, rep representative of ice, I want to stick with working mostly with blues. Um, that, in my mind, is the closest representation to ice, I guess, in my mind. <laughs> Probably it's how I saw it in paintings when I was younger, and so that's how I remember it. But when I was looking at the pictures um, that I took that day, there were also some really dark, um, almost grayish, um, the water looked grayish as it was water, like it, as it was freezing. And it, it's, um, that's because, you know, it's, it's over the soil and it's transparent. And so it's picking up everything that's underneath and, and that's great. But I'm trying to do something creative and interpretive here and so I'm coming in with these blues that I really like and I feel like they do have that icy cold feeling about them and as I mentioned earlier it's important also in order to create more dimension and make the shape stand out in my painting it's important that I come in and add darker values so right now I'm in the process of working with one of my favorite dark blues and it's called Blackberry. It's from a, uh, another color palette from um, Watercolor Confections by Prima and it's from specifically the watercolor palette called Decadent Pies. It's my all-time favorite color in that palette. I love the other colors in the palette. I've, I use them quite a bit actually, but this color I've exhausted a couple of times <laughs> because I love it so much. And I have other blues that probably come close to it, but this is the one that I, I prefer. I don't know why, I, I don't know. It's dark, it's still got, um, I don't know, there's a kind of rich quality to it that I really like. So I decided that I was gonna use this dark, dark value of blue to add some depth and dimension to my painting. In this area of the painting specifically, I'm going to add a little bit more water and paint pigment because I want to come in with some more coarse grain salt to add some more interesting marks. And the coarse grain salt in particular works way better when it's got a little bit more paint and um, water on the paper. You'll see that as I'm adding it, the paint starts to pool around those grains of salt and that is what creates those interesting marks.
I really love the wavy lines that I've created in the bo bottom uh, half of my painting. But if I don't add something to those wavy lines, it's going to look a little bit like it's separate and not really belonging to the same painting. Because the top portion of the painting is uh, has got a lot more going on. And there's a lot more shapes. There's a lot more... Um, it's a lot busier. So I don't want the painting to be too busy, but at the same time, I really want everything to be congruent. And in order to do this, in order to make the painting uh, more cohesive and congruent, it's important that I create that sense of um, having more shapes, I guess, show up in the bottom portion of the painting as well. I hope that makes sense. That's that's sort of how I'm seeing it. It it feels right now like if I didn't add the lines that I'm adding at the like at this present moment, that the bottom portion of the painting would would not really fit with the rest of it. And I want them. I want the whole entire piece to be very um, cohesive and to to make sense visually. And so this is why I'm adding these lines right now. It's sort of replicating a little bit what's happening on the top part of the painting without completely um, copying it, if you will, because it is going to be slightly different, but there are going to be some more shapes coming in, and I think that's going to help bring everything together. In my video last week, I introduced a new color that I just recently purchased that I'm also really excited about. It's kind of like a sibling to my tropical <laughs> sunrise magic green that I love so much. The color is called Ultra Rutile Blue Pearl. It's a color from Kramer Pigment and it's a color I've been eyeing for a while. It's another interference color. This time, instead of having the... Um, flecks of green in the paint it has flecks of blue and I thought it would be perfect for this painting and mm, just applying it right now and seeing it first being applied on the paper over all of this color I have I think it is going to fit really 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 well so I'm feeling even more excited now the thing about these colors, these interference colors, is that they have uh, this um, these flecks of, of a little bit of color they depending on how thickly you apply them can also be very transparent and when they're transparent if you move them in the light you will see like depending on where what angle you're looking at it you'll see what's underneath the paint and then when it catches the light it will show you those blue tinges of color that are coming up and I I think that's really cool for a painting like this if I'm trying to replicate ice ice when it catches the light can be very shiny so I feel like this is the right uh, the right type of uh, paint to, to go with for this process so I'm super excited to be using it it's really beautiful it may be a little bit harder for you to see it as I'm applying it here on the paper uh, especially over those light colors but now that I'm applying it over my blackberry which is a darker color you're gonna see it show up a little bit more so yeah <laughs> I'm a little bit excited about this I won't lie <laughs> I'm really falling in love with this painting and it's funny because there are always moments in the painting process where I feel a little bit unsure of myself and I'm not sure if it's going to turn out and I guess that's the beauty of the intuitive painting process. It's it's a lot about trusting. It's trusting yourself. It's trusting that what you're going to do next is going to bring it all together and it's continuing. It's continuing to move forward because we don't know. Like I have no idea 
exactly how this is going to look in the end but the more I keep painting the more I get excited about the process and the more I get excited about what I'm seeing happening on my paper and then I'm getting more and more inspired to do more to complete the painting so it all comes together with trust trusting that it will work out in the end and um you know I always say that at the very least whether or not it actually does sort of work out to be what you had pictured in your mind I am going to learn something and that learning is very very valuable That blue pearl I was working with um, initially was perfect and I love exactly how it looks on the painting. It feels like it's the right fit. And then I also want to do something that's a little bit unexpected because that's going to make the painting even more interesting. And so I'm coming in with my Tropical Sunrise Magic Green and I'm applying it right now in a very light wash and you probably can't even see a whole lot of what's going on because of the way the light is hitting it right now. It just almost looks transparent and you can't really see the any of the green flecks. But I do think green, being that it is a color of course that has blue in it, will be an interesting addition to this painting because when it catches the light in a certain way it'll sort of shock the eye if you will but in a nice way like not a way that's like whoa <laughs> kind of makes you jump back but in a way that'll make you go hmm that's kind of neat so <laughs> this is how I'm imagining it and as I'm adding it even though it's like I said not really visible for you right now all that much um well actually I think right now it's gonna probably start showing up a little bit more probably because I'm adding it here a little bit more pigmented so it's more the, the paint is a little bit more pigmented it doesn't have nearly as much water as the first applications that I made and I like doing this I like varying the application so sometimes I like to apply a lighter wash and other times I like to apply the paint a little bit more thickly and because I'm doing so you should be starting to see what it is I find interesting about adding this color in this painting so it's catching some of the the color from the blues because again green has blue in it but it also has a bit of a golden tone to it and gold is a really uh, nice complement to blue and so I feel like this is gonna work really well I'm very excited about it I think again it's the right next step <laughs> and I would have never been able to figure that out uh, if I had not just listened to my intuition when my intuition said hey you should give that a try With every brush stroke of that magic green, my heart is saying a huge yes. It feels like, oh, it's just perfect. It really is adding a little bit more interest to the painting. It's, of course, brilliant and shiny and <laughs> shimmery and all the things that I love about metallic paints or iridescent paints. And uh, yeah, I think it just, helps to make it all come to life and the blues were doing a really good job of you know creating interest in the painting the shapes and all the 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 movement that's in the painting already was very interesting but it needed a little something extra and this magic green was definitely the way to go The shapes, colors, and patterns I've added in my painting so far are really beautiful and coming together quite nicely. I'm loving what I've created. And at the same time, I want to add some more detail to make it even more interesting. One very easy way to do this, of course, for me is to do stippling. 
it's uh, a process that I really enjoy that has become a bit more challenging for me in recent months because I've been having elbow uh, pain and wrist pain and so I have had to modify the way I was working and um, sadly I can't do stippling with my fountain pen anymore. I, I need to change things up. It's not to say that I won't at some point be able to do it again but for now I need to change things up so that I can take care of my arm and I have found this dotting pen that uh, has been actually quite helpful for me in this area. I don't have to move my wrist a whole lot and it's a lot easier on my arm as well. Uh, I do still try to break things up when I'm working. You know, if you're working with an injury and you're trying to overcome the injury, then it's important to give it some rest. So I work with my dotting pen for a bit and then oftentimes I will switch things up and I'll go do something a little bit different or I'll just simply take a break and that's important too. This whole entire process of making this painting was many hours, <laughs> many, many hours. I had over two hours of footage uh, to edit for this painting, but the process itself, I didn't record every single uh, minute of my process. The process was much, much longer. And, and of course, you are not seeing all of the footage because I'm editing this for you to make it easier for you to watch and hopefully more enjoyable. <laughs> um, so yeah, I tend to bounce back and forth. I listen to my body. I listen to how my arm and hand and um, wrist are feeling and I I bounce from mark to mark depending on what's going on. So I started by working with the dotting tool which was working the dotting pen which was working quite well um, but at the same time I kind of felt like it needed a little bit of help and so I came in with my fountain pen and added a contour line around my shapes and now I'm working uh, with different marks using my fine tip extra pen, my, my extra fine tip uh, black pen. So again, it's about listening to your intuition. Um, I try to really pay close attention to my intuition, but I also really pay close attention to my body and how I'm feeling as I go along. This is important, I think, when you're dealing with injuries or with pain or or anything of the sort um, is to listen to our bodies and to see you know what it is that they need at whatever specific moment in time and I think it's also important to do this when we're not working with injuries because we want to keep our bodies working as optimally as possible for as long as possible I wanted to add a little bit more value contrast and darkness into some of my contour lines here and so I pulled out my brush pen because this is one of the easiest ways that I know I can do exactly that and um, black in this case because black is a neutral it works really well with adding this contrast into my painting while still keeping uh, with the theme of the painting. Whenever I create one type of mark in an area of my painting, I like to bring that type of mark in other areas of my painting just to keep everything looking congruent and cohesive. And so I added some of those vertical lines in my wavy um, shapes. And now I'm coming in and I'm adding vertical lines in some of my other shapes as well just to make everything sort of um, come together.
And because I had added some dots of iridescent paint in the bottom right corner of my painting, it didn't feel like it would be um, quite finished if I didn't add some more dots of those same uh, colors of paint elsewhere in my painting. So I'm coming in with the pearl, the blue pearl, and the magic green, and I'm doing exactly that. And I believe once this is done, I'll be ready to call my painting finished. Well, okay, I've changed my mind. I think I need just a few more little details and I will add some little dots in some of my shapes using, using my fountain pen and then I'll be ready to call it done. Well, actually no. <laughs> I've got something else I have in mind. So in the beginning I mentioned, or at least I think I mentioned, that I double taped my paper to create a double frame around my painting. And I, I like to do this every once in a while. I create a double frame and then I come in and add some color to the inner frame. And that's what I'm going to do now. To create this inner frame, I'm going to work with exactly the same colors that I already have in my painting. So I'll be working uh, with this cobalt blue, I'll also be working with my blackberry and I'll eventually add in a little bit of the iridescent paints as well. I like the inner frame or the out the little outer frame or inner frame I guess once I remove the rest of the tape and you see the white frame <laughs> um, but yeah I I like the frame I'm not loving it I feel like the painting needs a little something to make it stand out more so I'm coming in with a black marker and I'm adding another black frame around the entire um, interior of the painting because I think that's going to make it stand out more and now finally <laughs> I'll be ready to call it done. <laughs> I think I might have a little crush on this painting. <laughs> I love it so much. Oh my goodness. It is better than I think I could have ever imagining it, imagined it to turn out. It is um, fun. It's got a lot of shapes and marks, uh, interesting marks and interesting shapes. And the colors are just so beautiful together. And I really wish you could see it in person because these pictures don't really seem to cut it when it comes to showing you what I see here. But man, I love this little painting and I had so much fun creating it. I want to create more, in fact. Mother Nature really seems to be my greatest source of inspiration. And I wonder, does she inspire you the same way? And if not, what are your greatest sources of inspiration? Whatever it is you find inspiring, I hope it makes you feel eager to pick up your brushes and get painting. Thank you again for making the time to join me on my creative journey. I hope you have a wonderful week and happy creating!